Good morning and welcome to the Daily Download. I'm your host, Dr. Darara Pulley. This is the day the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. Thank you so much for being a part of the Daily Download where the Lord daily loads us with his benefits. I'm telling you, day is already loaded. It is already jammed and packed with the lessons and blessings of God. And my heart and my mind are open to receive all the good that God has for me. And I am praying with you today that your heart and your mind are open and receptive to divine unlimited ideas. If this is your first time watching the Daily Download, welcome to the Daily Download family. Like, follow, and share the Dr. DeGuerra Pulley page so that you can get notifications of when we're on Facebook Live. If you're one of our regular Kingdom citizens, students of truth, you know what time it is. It's time to press that share button, invite a family member, a friend, a neighbor, a co-worker, a classmate, a church member, and let them know that you're looking at the daily download with Dr. DeGuerra Pulley and invite them to watch live with you. Well, we are in this Lenten season. This is day number 11. Uh, we're looking at the book, uh, Way Shower, A New View of Jesus. How many of you have been seeing Jesus in a new way? How many have been getting a new view of Jesus as a result of doing this Lenten consecration, this adventure in consciousness? Come on, give me some thumbs up. Give me some hearts. Give me some likes. Let me know whether or not you've been seeing Jesus in a new way as a result of this adventure in consciousness. Well, we've been drinking the water. I'm already up to 36 ounces because I've chosen uh, from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. Uh, to have my 12 hours of intermittent fasting. Uh, so just as Jesus was 12 years old in the temple when he had his awakening in consciousness, we are consecrating ourselves in fasting for 12 hours every day. What are your 12 hours? How have you been doing with it? Have you been keeping it? Um, I know that my stomach is all the way in my back and I'm looking forward to 8 o'clock. I'm a person that's used to eating. Uh, so to really cut off my eating at 8 o'clock last night and not eat anything this morning has been challenging to say the least. But God is with me every step of the way through every challenge. And when I feel that hunger pain, what I do is I get my water and I begin to drink it. Uh, so how are you making out with the, the dietary part? How are you making out with the fasting part? I know we had a lot of adventures in consciousness groups last night, and those groups are support systems. They are networks to help you make it through this consecration so that you're not going through it by yourself, but you're going through it with a team. You're going through it with a group so that you can make it together. Um, also, we're grateful that we had revival last night at Hood Temple uh, Memorial AMEZ Church in Tampa. And I'm telling you, we had a wonderful time. If you're in the Tampa area tonight, join us at 7 o'clock clock for revival. Yes, it is a spring revival right in the midst of the Lenten season, uh, Pastor Bessie Mohead, and we're so grateful for this opportunity to be able to share uh, with, Hood with Hood Memorial Temple AME Zion Church. Alright, so let's get to it. We're on day 11. Um, if you have not yet got a copy of your book, you can get it from Amazon. You can also get it from Barnes and Nobles. Anywhere the books are sold, you can get a print-on-demand copy of the book. And so we're on day number 11 and we're looking at day uh, page number 33 and we're talking about the accountability come on say that word with me accountability it's not a dirty word it's not a cuss word you can say it again accountability one more time accountability and we're looking all week at Luke chapter 2 verses 41 to 52 and our verse of the day today is 1 Peter 3 15 be ready always to give an answer to every man or every person that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Excuse me, 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 15. Our denial is, I have nothing to hide. Come on, deal with that truth today. Clear that slate of fear and feel like you need to sneak and hide and dip and slip. You know, I have nothing to hide. All right, our affirmation is I am open to answer people's questions. And we talked about that last and uh, yesterday, building relationship and rapport where we can ask and answer questions. So when I have that relationship with people, when I have that rapport with people, I am open 
uh, to answer their questions. And people have a right to me. There's some people that can ask me certain things and I can ask certain things because we built up that rapport and relationship. So I don't need to hide, I don't need to lie to them, but I'm open to their questions. And kingdom principle for today is divine protection. The Bible says wisdom is in the counsel of the multitude. And there's a protection about having a team of people that's on your side. There's protection and you're not just doing your own thing your own way. Because the Bible says that every man, every person is right in their own eyes. So you need to have a team. You need to have a group of people um, who can serve as your A-team, who can serve as your God team to help you uh, be protected as you make decisions and go through the various phases of life. In our text, uh, Luke chapter 2, we're dealing with the fact that Jesus was left his parents, he was in the temple asking and answering questions of the doctors and the lawyers, and today we're at the point where he told them he had to be about his father's business, but they questioned him, where were you? And his parents, in the natural, had a right to question him, had a right to ask him questions because they were responsible for him. They were his parents. And so a part of their role, their responsibility in his life was to make sure that he was okay, to make sure that he was safe, to make sure that he was taken care of. So our subject for today is somebody need to check you, boo. That's right, I said it. Somebody need to check you, boo. Somebody. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with um, the Real Housewives of Atlanta when uh, Cherie said, who going to check me, boo? You know, that she had this idea that nobody could tell her what to do. She was three times seven plus one. She could do whatever she wanted to do. Nobody was paying her bills. She was an independent woman. And she said, who going to check me, boo? Well, I'm telling you today, somebody need to check you, boo. That's right. That's our subject for today. Somebody needs to check you, boo. You need to be checked. Yes, I said it. You need to be checked. So that somebody that checks you, boo, pulley point number one, is someone that you know that cares about you. You know, when somebody is checking you, what makes the check okay, what makes it palatable, what makes you be able to receive it is that you know the person who's checking you really cares about you. That when you have my best interest in heart, uh, at heart, when I know that you love me, when I know that you care about me, then that's the first thing that lets me know that you got permission to check me, boo. Yes, I give people in my life that I know care about me permission to check me. And I tell them you don't have to say it sweet. You don't have to say it kind and nice. Just say what you got to say. You don't have to put a bun on it, you know, say something nice and really say to me to what you say. And they give me another little sweet thing at the end. The people that I know care about me, whatever they say to me, I receive it. I receive it in love because I know that they care about me. Even if sometimes it doesn't come across as love, sometimes it may come across as criticism, sometimes it may come forth as confrontation. But the truth that I know that they care about me, puts me in a mindset to be able to receive what it is that they have to say. And if Jesus got checked by his parents, then you need to be checked too. Who going to check you, boo? Somebody, somebody who cares about you needs to have that permission in your life, that you give them that permission to be able to check me. If I see you, if you see me going down the wrong road, say something. If you see me doing the wrong thing, say something. Hold me accountable. Check me. And I receive that check because I know it's not for my destruction. It's for my construction. I know that it's for my good because you care about me. Bully point number two. Somebody need to check you, boo. Somebody that cares about you and someone that you have things in common with. Because when we check, we need to make sure that we got some common ground about what we check it. Um, if we don't have the same idea about a thing, if we don't have the same idea about accountability, if we don't have the same idea, if we don't have that common ground um, where we're on the same page about things, uh, then the check is going to be an argument then the check is going to be a disagreement. Then the check is going to be uh, something explosive because we don't have this in common. So the people who check you need to care about you, but they also need to have some things in common with you, that you are both on a spiritual path, that you both... Um, desire to succeed, that you both have goals and aspirations that you are trying to accomplish, and you know that accountability is the only way that you're going to get those goals accomplished. Sometimes we just veer off to the left, and we need somebody that we have some things in common with to bring us back to center. 
Sometimes we veer off to the right. And we need somebody that we have some things in common with. That you believe in the principles that I believe in. That you believe in the spiritual practices and the spiritual principles that I believe in. So when you're checking me, you're checking me based upon something that we have in common. You're checking me based upon the kingdom principles that I say I believe in. You're checking me based upon the kingdom practices that I've committed to make a part of my life, my world, and my affairs. So that makes the check more powerful. It makes the check more effective because you're checking me based upon the common principles and the common practices that we share. All right? Pulley point number three. Um, what makes the check powerful is not just somebody that cares about you, not just somebody that you have in common, things in common with, that you have similar belief systems and areas of accountability. But pulley point number three, it's someone that can compliment you. The person who checks you, you don't need them to be a yes person. Because some people just think everything you say is wonderful. Everything you do is wonderful. You know that, you know, your mouth is a prayer book. And, you know, everything that comes out of your mouth is just sugar and honey. You know, and that you're just the best person since sliced butter and bread. Well, you need somebody to check you who knows all of that about you, but still has some things in compliment. You don't need a yes person checking you because the yes person is going to say yes. Oh, what do you think about that? Oh, I think that's wonderful. Well, what do you think about Oh, I think it's great. I think it's wonderful. Because that person is not complimenting you. And so you need people in your life to compliment you that don't think the way that you think. That don't look at things the way that you look at things. That see a different perspective. That can bring you a new thought. That can bring you another idea. That can give you something to think about. And so I'm saying to you today, you need people in your life to check it. Let me tell you, I got a whole system of checks and balances in my life. You know, I got a spiritual covering. I got an accountability partner. I got a mentor. I got friends. I got all kind of people in my life that can check me. And when I make a decision about something, when I make those major decisions in my life. I pull together my A-team, you know, and I get the different perspectives because they're different ages, different races, they're different uh, genders, they're different religions, and so I pull together my A-team, and I ask them, what do you think about this? And I give them permission to check me. I give them permission to give me that different perspective. That's the only way you're going to grow. That's the only way you're going to learn. That's the only way you're going to be successful. That's the only way that you are going to heal. You need a team. You need a group of people that you know care about you, a group of people where you have things in common with, and a group of people where you have things in complement with, where you give them access to you. You give them access to your life. Even Jesus was checked. You know, the, the centurion, you know, he said, look, I'm a man in authority, but I'm also a man under authority. I tell one to go, and he goes. I tell one to come, and he comes. And he recognized that same power in Jesus. He said, all you got to do is speak the word, and it's done. If we are in authority, we also need to be under authority. If you are in power, you also need to be under power. You need that balance in your life because as I read in Animal Farm in high school, um, power can corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. You're never going to get to a place in your life where you don't need to be checked. You're never going to be old enough, grown enough. You're never going to make enough money where you don't need to be checked. You're never going to be independent enough where you don't need to be checked. That's why we got the government, you know, where they check us with these various boards. You know, I'm a psychologist. But I have to be checked. I have to keep up my license. I have to do continuing education credits. I have to report that I haven't committed any crimes. I got to have insurance. There are various checks and balances in life. And even if you own your own business, the state has regulation, has rules where they can check you. You're never going to get to a place in your life where you can't be checked. Even a spouse, a husband, a wife, a partner are in your life to help check you. You know, why be in a relationship with somebody you can't check? Why be in a partnership with somebody that you can't check, that cannot check you? Somebody need to check you, boo, because you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. You are on a road and a path to destruction. When you think that nobody can tell you anything and you know everything, then you are on a path to destruction. The Bible says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. That's your ego that's been lifted up that makes you think that you don't need anybody to check you. But oh, when you go into prayer, oh, when you go into meditation, the stillness and the 
silent. You come out knowing that I need to be checked. Yes, that my ego has gotten bigger than this whole building. And I can't even get my head through the door. So I need to be checked. Somebody needs to rain on my parade. Somebody needs to take the bubbly out of my champagne. Somebody needs to take the get up out of my get along because I've gotten beyond myself. And I need to be checked. Let me tell you. I don't want to be in close relationship with people that can't be checked, that cannot look at themselves and have other people hold up a mirror and say, do you see yourself? Do you see your life? Do you see what's happening with your health? You know, I know what you've been thinking. I know what you've been doing because I can look at your health. Your health is telling me you need to be checked. I can look at your finances and say something in your life is out of order. You need to be checked. I can look at your relationships and say something in your life is not working. You need to be checked. And you are always manifesting through your health, through your wealth, and through your relationships whether or not you're being checked. Whether or not you're operating according to kingdom principles, whether or not you're operating according to the Christ consciousness, or whether you're living in your ego. I'm saying, I'm going to say it one more time. Somebody need to check you both. Somebody that cares about you, somebody that you have things in common with, and somebody that will compliment you and bring the balance needs to check you. Somebody need to check you, boo. I love you so much. Thank you so much for being a part of the daily download. Yes, you've been checked this morning. Share this on your page. Somebody else, I don't care what title you have. You can be bishop. You can be archbishop. You can be metropolitan. You can be the king of, uh, of Canterbury, the archbishop of Canterbury. You still need to be checked. You're never going to graduate from needing a spiritual leader in your life. You're never going to graduate from needing a pastor, a spiritual teacher in your life. You're never going to graduate from needing to be checked. Somebody need to check you, boy. Join me at 7 o'clock on my personal page, Darrell R. Pulley, where we go into prayer. Wednesday is our prayer day. If you're in the Tampa area, join us tonight for Revival at Hood Temple, um, AMEZ, AMEZ Church. Um, until tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m., you know, sow a seed, meet a need, boost this post, and I will see you tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. as we continue this adventure and conscious as we continue throughout the Lenten season. I love you so much. God bless you. Have a positive, productive day. I don't know what you call them, but I call them Ray Show.